Oh my goodness, look at this. Secrets of the Elephants, narrated by Natalie Portman. Not Meghan Markle. <laughs> yes, this is the new uh, Secrets of the Elephants uh, documentary, which is actually very beautiful. It's narrated by Natalie Portman, not Meghan Markle. I wonder where why they're kind of redoing this. Is it because the one that Meghan Markle narrated failed? So they did end up doing another one, but this time with a proper A-lister. I really recommend you guys, guys watch it because it's very nice. It's very interesting, isn't it? Two documentaries about elephants. One is going to be a success. The other one failed. Which one is going to succeed, you think? <laughs> what happened to the three million? Good morning, beautiful people. The Duchess of Sussex is going about her life in the present, not thinking about correspondence from two years ago related to conversations from four years ago. Any suggestion otherwise is false and frankly ridiculous. We encourage tabloid media and various royal correspondents to stop the exhausting circus that they alone are creating. <laughs> this was posted by Omid Scobie, by the way. Yes. Yes. Megan got a legal letter from Charles. Let's get into this. You know, given that Megan sued the newspapers in the United Kingdom, she didn't really win. She just won the right not to take them to court based on her perjury. So why am I bringing this up right now? Introducing the Freedom of Information Act. Why does this matter at all? And why did the Telegraph receive a legal letter from Charles? Well, so you know, the royal household is not a public authority within the meaning of the FOI, Freedom of Information Act, and is therefore exact, exempt from their provisions. Okay, I don't know if you know about the scandals many, many years ago that Charles kept writing and writing and writing and writing, um, trying to influence policy, politics, and all sorts of things. He used to write to the House of Parliament like crazy. So the Daily Mail or, or, or one of those newspapers wanted those letters published or wanted the letters published because they said, you know what? If it, why is... Prince Charles, at the time he was Prince of Wales, writing to parliamentary members, the UK, the household, the UK parliament, everybody, asking to influence this, influence that. He was influencing architecture. He was influencing uh, policy and agriculture. Monarch is not supposed to do that. They're not supposed, and he wasn't even a monarch. He was a prince. Anyways, to make a story short, they kind of won in 2000. Um, and in 2000, I think, five, I want to say, or some 2015, the letters, some of the letters, which are called the Black Spider letters, were published. But what was the result of that? The result of that was that the free, instead of making being more transparent, the parliament modified the Freedom of Information Act. So all correspondence from the monarch and the heir to the throne are confidential. Even the public, even though the public may be interesting, interested in knowing about it, the letters were not considered of public interest. I don't know if that makes any difference to you. That means just because I want to know, it doesn't mean that I am going to know. <laughs> That's basically the gist of this. Why did Megan get in trouble, you ask, right? So it's about this act. It says, information held by public authorities relating to the queen and members of the royal family. This is on the royal website, by the way. You can get it there. Many public authorities will hold information relating to members of the royal families or royal households, activities, and functions. The specific royal household exemption contained in the Freedom of Information Act is not concerned with all information rela relating to the queen, other members of the royal family, or other royal household it is concerned more narrowly with information relating to communications with the queen, other members of the royal family, or the royal household. Section 37 of the Freedom of Information Act provided absolute 
i.e. no need for a public interest test, exemption for information relating to communications with and or behalf of the sovereign, the heir to the throne, and the second in line to the throne. But the exemption is qualified, i.e. subject to consideration of the public interest interest test for information relating to communications with or on behalf of other members of the royal family or members of the royal household. What does that mean? It means that <laughs> Megan screwed up because she leaked information by the heir to the throne. At that time, uh, Charles was, was the heir to the throne, which is considered private and is protected under the Freedom of Information Act. So what did Megan need to do or what did the Telegraph need to do in order for that to be leaked or that article to be written? They needed to contact Buckingham Palace and get authorization. Yes, you heard me right. Because they are supposed they are exempt from the Freedom of Information Act, so they need the authorization of the monarch or the person or the heir to the throne um, to publish that letter or write an article about the contents of any communications uh, between the heir to the throne, the sovereign. Right now, Charles is the sovereign. So, and even, I know what you're going to say, but he wasn't the sovereign when he when he wrote that letter to Meghan, but he was the heir to the throne. So as such, he's legally protected. So basically, Charles sent a warning letter, a legal letter to the Telegraph because they shouldn't have published that article without the consent of the of the monarch but they did and what is the telegraph's defense about it it's probably going to be saying well mega markle gave the letter we're not publishing enough of the letter because remember what the judge said about mega markle's letter when when anl lost the case that they published too much of the letter so megan has learned her lesson she's not giving direct quotations from the letter but she's giving enough quotations for Charles to the world to know that the letter exists. Now, let's go back to this bit here, that the Duchess of Sussex is going about her life in the present. Well, she's saying that this these things happened four years ago and blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's say that that is true, because it, it is true, they happened four years ago. Yet, that would have been around 2018, when Meghan was just pregnant, Yet, two years later, she went on Oprah and did a whole racist thing. It was a whole racist thing that she did, accusing the royal family of racism, because yes, she did. And now, I don't understand why she gets to speak about it when she wasn't in the conversation, because then that is gossip. When you're conveying information that you did not witness on your, of, from, with your own eyes, that is gossip especially when you're twisting around the words that you're using. So two years later, she goes back on Oprah and talks about it in a worldwide stage. Was it two years or three years? I think it was three years later. No, two years because I think it was, no, it was in 2021. Archie was born in, 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 in June, no, I don't know when the kid was born, in May 6th. Oh, yes, of course, May 6th. That's when the coronation is coming. The kid was born in May 6th, 2019. Yeah, no, so it would be two years. She went after two years. Two years later, she's talking about, to Oprah about it. Then we have the book. No, we have the Netflix documentary or mockumentary, which was six hours. By the way, do you guys know that Meghan Markle has worked more in the documentary writing the bench or anything like that than at Archwell Foundation? And I wonder if she gave any of the proceedings from the bench to Archwell Foundation. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm going to do actually a video about that. And a theory I have about the $13 million. But let's go back to this video. So... In it itself, this whole thing is, a, is absolute BS because two years afterwards, she goes on Oprah and clearly she was still very angry about it because she kept talking about it and it made it the central point. But because it backfired, she's backpedaling. So now we have, and then she goes that, she's going on about her life. Any suggestions otherwise is false 
and frankly ridiculous. We encourage tabloid media. Now, Harry, the, the, please be aware that the, the, um, the newspaper that wrote this article is The Telegraph by Victoria Ward, who's been writing glowing reviews and articles about Harry and Meghan. And it's the only paper that Harry praises as real newspapers, not tabloid magazine. But here we have Meghan Markle. So to me, you know what this shows? That Meghan is saying one thing and Harry is saying another thing because Harry's ass is going to be dumped pretty soon. And I hope it does. And I hope it's very public. And I really hope they go after him and they take everything away from him for being a traitor because that's what he deserves. I don't buy this BS. Oh, poor Harry. He's drugged up. No, he is a narcissistic wanker. He's a ginger. And I don't mean ginger in a nasty way, but that's one of his features. I know I got a few of you telling me, why are you use ginger as, an, as, as though it's an insult? I'm not, I'm not using ginger as an insult. I'm, it's a feature, you know, of, of his very distinctive one. And it's unfortunate because he gives, you know, poor ginger people that they have such a high profile representative of their, <laughs> you know, as their ginger. Yeah. So yes. So clearly this is not true. Why is this important? Because Meghan Markle is freaking out because she knows she screwed up. And this is the first time most likely she's gotten a legal letter from Charles because even though the legal letter was sent to the telegraph, this is basically what Charles is saying. You were not allowed to to post anything about private correspondence between the monarch or the Prince of Wales at the time and another member of the royal family because that is not of public interest. Those are personal letters protected under the Freedom of Information Acts that we are exempt. So in a way they're protected from, from uh, public scrutiny by the Freedom of Information Acts because that got, um, I believe was reformed in 2010. So this is what's happening right now. The article has been published. So basically the F Telegraph, they needed to do their due diligence and contact the palace and say, because they have to give the palace uh, um, a right of reply, which clearly they didn't do because I don't believe that Charles would have allowed that article to go out right now. So they didn't do their right of reply um, request which is, listen, we're about to publish this article. It's about a private letter that between that Meghan claims or our sources says between you and Meghan Markle. Can we go ahead and publish it? Of course they didn't do that. Of course they didn't do that. So good on Charles that he sent a legal letter because that sets a precedent. Meghan Markle was not supposed to leak information in regards to any correspondence between her and the king because that he is protected. Or the, the um, and it goes from the monarch, the heir to the throne, and the second in line to the throne. This would include George, Prince George. So hooray for Charles. Meghan Markle now is also sending legal letters. Yeah, we know that she's not going to really pursue an action because she's the one providing all the information. And I wish people would stop saying Sussex camp. It is Harry or Meghan who authorized this because this woman has such tight control over everything, you know. So if anything is leaked out, it was either done by Charles or Meghan. We know Charles would never leak anything like that because, of course, he wants to protect his precious reputation. And, of course, now the Telegraph article has been modified. So good on Charles. What do you guys think? Do you guys share my opinion that even though the legal letter was sent to the Telegraph, it was actually meant for Meghan as a message? I think so. And the funny thing is that I believe that the, the Telegraph, they have to disclose who gave them that information because that otherwise they're in a lot of trouble. So they either got it from Megan or they got it from King Charles and they clearly didn't do the right or reply. What do you think is going to happen now? I think this has backfired hugely on Meghan Markle and this is why she's putting her mouthpiece. What I don't understand is why she keeps using, why Omid has no pride. Because they threw, Harry threw him under the bus. And yet, Meghan is using this. So to me, he is truly Meghan's mouthpiece. Because Harry says one thing. And remember when, what, what, when Harry said that um, Meghan never got any training about security training. And then Omid came back and, and bit back and said, well, he, he, I don't know why Harry's saying that. And he's using first name basis. 
That is directly from Meghan Markle. So we know that Victoria Ward is Meghan Markle's mouthpiece, as long, along with Omid Scobie, because she's not impartial to anything. She will praise Harry as long as Meghan Markle tells her to do so. What do you guys think?